Welcome to the American Legal System PowerPoint Lecture Series, Part 2, Regarding Constitutions. A constitution is called that because it is literally what constitutes the legal nation and is the highest law of the land. So in the last lecture PowerPoint, we talked about sovereignty. Uh, and the legal authority to rule within borders. And that's in a bit of an abstract concept and the constitution is what actually makes that state, that legal state of authority. All nations have a constitution. So all sovereign nations have a constitution, but they can vary a little bit in their form. In most instances, the Constitution is in fact a single secular document with the title of Constitution of whatever the nation is. Uh, the famous one there in front of you being the preamble to the Constitution of the United States of America. There are also a number of hybrid or religious-based constitutions in different sovereign nations in the world. Uh, so some nations have constitutions that incorporate other authorities, usually a religious authority. For example, the Magna Carta is referred to as England's constitution. It's a document that sets out the rights of Englishmen. However, England is a constitutional monarchy. And as in all monarchies, the uh, regent, the queen in this case, or a king in, in, uh, in others, um, holds power of governance from some ancient deity-based source. That is, the people acknowledge and accept a divine right of kings, which has made uh, princes and kings and sheikhs and other sorts of uh, God-ordained or deity-ordained um, high rulers. So England is really a hybrid nation. They have a constitution, but that constitution is modified by this uh, religious right, divine right of kings. The constitutions of quite a few other nations also reference religious sources of authority or law like the Bible, the Torah, or the Holy Quran. Um, there are one or two nations who've declared the Quran itself to be the nation's constitution and highest source of law with no other secular document, but those are extremely rare. Um, many nations reference the Bible in their constitutions, um, including, for example, Spain, which is, remains a Catholic nation. In our federalist system, which we talked about in looking at sovereignty, we have in the United States two sovereigns, and therefore we're always under two constitutions. So the United States Constitution is the highest law in the United States, but each state also has its own constitution, and that's the highest law in that particular state, except for the U.S. Constitution. In our U.S. Federalist system, the U.S. Constitution sets the minimum floor for protection of rights. Each state constitution may recognize and protect broader rights and afford broader procedural protections to its citizens uh, than the U.S. Constitution. For example, state constitutions had recognized by under state laws, a number of states had said that same gender marriages are lawful under their or required under their state constitutional equal protection provisions law under their state constitutions long before federal law did the same thing regarding the u.s constitutions and many state constitutions like vermont's provide far greater protections against criminal searches and seizures than the u.s constitution does under federal law 
So I'd like you to pause this for a moment and look up your own state's constitution and read it. Just do a Google search. And I suspect most of you, but not all of you, will be in Vermont. And you can take a look at the Vermont constitution. Um, and you'll notice that it's set up in a very different order than the US constitution. Uh, and see if anything in there surprises you. And when you come back to this recording, um, then take a look at the following uh, comparison between the US and Vermont constitutional provisions regarding freedom of religion. Take a moment and look at those. Take a moment and look at those comparisons between the US Constitution Amendment 1 and the Vermont Constitution, Article 3, regarding freedom of religion. Which one of them takes an approach of limiting government actions as opposed to the other one that takes an approach of protecting individuals' rights? Now, those are may seem like subtle distinctions, but when you start looking at case law and how they are interpreted, they can wind up being two quite different things. I'm going to mention very briefly here as we wrap up our discussion of constitutions, the notion of jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is the power of a court to hear a particular case. And a court must have jurisdiction over both the subject matter and the people involved in a legal case. I have posted a fabulous resource from the Wex Encyclopedia on the Legal Information Institute, which is part of the Cornell University Law School's uh, online library. Uh, and it's just a page. Take a read through that on jurisdiction before you address the discussion questions on that or the writing, I'm sorry, the writing assignment on that. So just to recap, uh, constitution is the highest law of the land and all other laws adopted in the United States, both federal and state law must not derogate, that is run afoul of, contravene, violate the US constitution. And all laws adopted within a state must also not derogate that state's constitution. And that brings us to the sources of all those other laws, which will be in our next PowerPoint lecture segment.